Where from B or C? Sir, B. B? Okay. Yes, sir. And how far did you go? This RSEC model. And did I also talk about the, uh, the log normal shadowing, the Gaussian distribution? Yes, sir. I think you covered up to the um, the P out, the power out portion. Out, out is probability. Then the indoor indoor propagation models. Uh, I think you started this one. I'm not sure if you finished it. I mean this this plot we we discussed. Yes, sir. You, yes, sir. I did. Okay. Indoor propagation models. Uh, yes, yeah, so you started this one. Started. Okay. High frequency propagation model. Uh, Probably then so I. You, so you completed up to outage probability, sir. Con up to outage probability. Okay. Okay. Uh, got you. With section C, then I think I am behind. Section yes, C, guys, yes. please, please let me know where I was. Sir, we are going to start from deterministic models. Okay. Log. Uh, okay, deterministic models. What well, Fujikagami I talked about. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, let me tell you that for any of these models, uh, the purpose. Uh, okay. Maybe I have mentioned it in the beginning. I probably mentioned it somewhere. That uh, the models <clears throat> gives you path loss and uh, you incorporate it to determine receipt power. This is for sure clear. Then you can, uh, I mean, most commonly, it, uh, it is used in two different ways. Like if you know your transmit power and uh, GT and GR should be fixed. Okay. Uh, but transmit power is definitely variable. So if you have already come up with a decision for your transmit power, with that loss, uh, you can estimate the distance that you can cover at the maximum. So that gives you the range, coverage range, or the cell size. So the cell size can be estimated from the transmit power. But more commonly, <clears throat> you can go the other way around. You may already have some, I mean, when you were designing the cell planning, you had some expected cell dimension or the maximum uh, range or the, I mean, cell radius. So you wanna then set the required transmit power. Using the path loss model, you estimate the loss of power on the way and GTGR phased. Given that, you can determine PT to get certain receipt power, which is the minimum tolerable level of the of receipt power. So uh, it can either be used, the whole path loss model can be either be used to estimate the distance that you may be covering at the maximum or maybe the uh, minimum transmit power level to have coverage up to certain distance. Okay, And that is more likely to happen when you're designing, when you're doing radio planning. Okay, and, okay. and please let me know if anything is not clear. We um, shared, I mean, we wrote down from next classes, inshallah, I'll have a writing board with, uh, connected to my laptop. Today, I think it is not required. I mean, whatever discussion I have. Today, I could also connect it, but uh, I just thought it wouldn't be necessary today. Uh, well, uh, but in classes, I wrote down PR equals PT plus GT plus GR minus PL. Okay. So that's why you always relate PR and uh, PL. Uh, sir? And, yeah, yeah. Please, Sir, for, uh, for section B, you finished this slide. In, you were about to start another one. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. So, uh, now, uh, this particular thing I didn't uh, mention 
in section B that the path loss model can be used into in these two different ways, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And also, I mean, for uh, section B, guys, uh, I mean, uh, we we when you shared shared this outest probability uh, curve, okay, versus distance. I mean, this is how you get an. I mean, just it's a it's a I mean reiteration uh, to make sure that you get the point that this way, this is how okay. you can estimate that you have certain outest probability somewhere. Okay, like I mean with say with the Gaussian distribution with the okay. um, with Gaussian distribution you can say you have certain mean power level. This is the mean power level. And uh, that is, say, the probability. Uh, 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 but um, I mean, uh, I mean, you have certain probability to to get this mean value. But for some other values, you also have some probability. So this, without this probability, you, if you don't calculate in a probabilistic way, you estimate that I get this much power, say minus. 85 dBm I get. But in fact, you have minus 85 dBm uh, from your, uh, from a crude calculation. You may get, there is certain probability that you get minus 88 or you get minus 90. There's another probability. Okay. So when the power falls, if minus 90 is the minimum tolerable level, what is the probability that it falls below that? That's so you check the outest probability and but you have some estimation that i i i mean i should maintain this kind of quality the outest probability should not fall below this percentage another operator will have another level of quality that will maintain another outest probability that will tolerate another outest probability and so the the estimation of cell radius or cell planning would differ Okay, with that, I'm gonna conclude with section B, and uh, I need probably around 10 minutes for section C to finish the rest of this slide. Then uh, I'd like to have the next uh, lecture with both section B and section C. I'm sorry, but section B, guys, can you, I mean, bear with me for another 10 minutes. I'd like to have the class only section C now, just to complete this slide. Is it all right? I mean, this is only for this first class. From next class, it, it won't be like this. You don't have to wait. Okay. So please, section B, folks, wait for a while. Now, for section C, uh, well, with deterministic models, uh, we already have some uh, models before, like free free space equation and two-ray model, they are completely deterministic because we completely relied on some theories to come up with the relationship for path loss or receipt power. Log distance or log normal shadowing are also partly deterministic. The path loss exponent may come from tests. Okay. So when you rely on basically theories, it is categorized as deterministic model. For log, the log distance model was previously shared. Uh, the path loss exponent value uh, is given from tests in this table in the book of Rappaport. I spoke of it while, while I was discussing it after Turing model. You probably remember. Now, log normal shadowing is another model, which is sort of an extension to log distance model. In that case, you add a probabilistic uh, function to whatever you had for log distance. See, for log distance model, we had this first two terms to estimate the path loss. Here, we just add a Gaussian distribution function and it has zero mean. So what happens, the whole path loss, okay, the left side, the term on the left side becomes a Gaussian distribution with this first, I mean, this first part as the uh, I mean, the addition of the first and second term. This whole thing becomes the new mean. The mean is shifted since x is the 
loss in this means zero mean the mean is shifted to the value that you have for log d distance model okay. the standard deviation um, can differ so in the problem in the exam the standard deviation may be given uh, the path loss now is estimated as a probabilistic function. The concept, the underlying concept is that in reality, there are so much uncertainties in the environment, your estimation is can vary um, uh, a lot, can deviate a lot from the real experience. And it, it can also vary with time Okay, over the year, things can vary. So your value should come as a probabilistic value. When you determine path loss, or I mean, you have a prior calculation for path loss, it is merely a, an estimation with certain probability that you might get this value. And um, a closer value has also has certain good probability. As you deviate from the from your calculated value, you have definitely less and less chance, but you still have some probability to get those deviated values. So more like you shouldn't read, rather declare a fixed value for your path loss or receipt power. Rather, to consider the reality, you should express as a probability that I uh, I have this much probability to have, get this much value. Well, but it is not only a single value that you may be interested in. You want to maintain certain performance. So the power level uh, should not fall below certain level. Rather, I mean, you, you kind of say like, I need say minus 70 dB M power as my receipt power. No, oh, if it is better than that, it is even better for you. But you can tell that the power should not fall below that. So your expected value is not something something fixed. Rather, it's a it's a range. Say, it's, I mean, up to this value is good, or things like that. So when you have a probabilistic uh, distribution for your estimated value, you can also determine how far I can take from there. And uh, with Gaussian distribution, this kind of calculation is very simple. I I believe you had it already in other courses. So this is the PDF probability distribution function for Gaussian. It's also called normal because in nature the norm uh, the Gaussian distribution is uh, I mean most common. It's most natural distribution. So the whole model is called log normal shadowing model. Uh, now, this uh, Gaussian distribution, since you're familiar, I'm just going through the slides quickly. It can be fat or thin, depending on your standard deviation. Now, for calculation, uh, of the area, the total area under the whole distribution must be one. Okay, the total probability is one. And to calculate certain area under the distribution, uh, you can uh, use a J table. So if you want to calculate that, uh, what is the area up to certain value x or beyond certain value x? So then first calculate J mu is the mean value and uh, in the denominator you have the standard deviation so once you calculate z then from a z table you can calculate the area like here uh, to have certain value up to up to this uh, let's say one, one, one so the area uh, has is a form from z table this way. So one point five and here one point five, and then on the column point zero one, you get the corresponding value point nine three four five. So the area up to this level 
is uh, 194.5 or 93.45 percent percent. So I may provide the J table along with the question in the exam. Uh, uh, an ounce, the standard deviation 13. Then what is the chance of obtaining birth weight? Uh, 141 or heavier. So calculate it first, put the value of x141, then you get to 146. So from the jet table, you get the corresponding value 0.9931. But you want a value, uh, I mean, beyond that. This is the value up to that level, up to 141. So what is the area beyond that? So one minus this this 0.931, so 0.69%. On the other hand, if you want to calculate the weight area up to this level, say one bar weight is 120 or lighter, okay, then from Z, uh, you get the corresponding value 0 0.8023. So the area under up to 120, uh, is 0.8023, so 80.23 percent probability. And uh, if you have uh, access to computer, you can use uh, mathematical function instead of jet table to get more accurate values. I mean, uh, to work with uh, meticulous values uh, like uh, Q function, okay, gives you the probability of a value to exceeding certain level. So the area beyond beyond certain level. Okay, so there's a I mean Q function gives you the value returns this value. But there is a mathematical function, error function, and there is one complementary error function, which are related to Q function this way. Uh, so you can and in some jet table, you can use error function in MATLAB ERF or ERFC. Uh, to calculate the values. Okay, so just let's go through a quick example. <clears throat> so for outage probability. Okay, I, I told you that you always relate PL to PR this way. And the uh, outage probability is is that the you set certain minimum tolerable power, P mean. So what is the probability to get the receipt power below that? Falling below this level. That is your, that you call, consider as the out of uh, coverage situation. Like in common speech, we say that there is no network. Okay, it is out of network. This kind of terms we use uh, commonly. And so the same thing is called outage here. And we are just calculating the probability to have the out outage. So they're calculating the probability to get the receipt for falling below this is specified level. Uh, in this example, base station is 36 dBm, and the gain of the base station antenna is 15 dBm. <coughs> the mobile station has the gain 0 dB. And um, a certain distance, 500 meter, the receipt power is given. The minimum tolerable power is minus 90 dBm, okay, which is the P mean here. And the path loss exponent is given 3.4. So you need to plot out its probability with cell radius. The standard deviation for uh, norm normal distribution is given for. Okay, now you see that this instead of D naught, D naught um, ideally refers to a close-in reference point. Uh, but uh, I can use any values here. Uh, any other, if you have the value known for any other distance that you can consider as <laughs> this D naught, like a D1. So uh, from there, I'm mean, using this known power at five uh, for 500 meter. We can calculate the path loss at this D naught at certain distance D1. Then you can calculate the path loss for other distances. And when you use the error function, so we're using, uh, I mean, MATLAB program. Uh, 
So we're entering PDGTG year standard deviation that likes one values. And, and uh, the uh, <coughs> uh, well, distance I mean, uh, this point information is known distance 500 meters. So D1 is set to that. And for D2, we take a range of values because on a plot, routers probably at different distances. So initially, we calculate the receipt power is given for D1. So we calculate the path loss, okay, for D1 uh, using this relation. Okay, put B or D1 here, DGDG, so P L D1, you calculate from here. Then we calculate path loss for other distances using this. I mean, we get the mean value, mean value of path loss for other distances. So this is the mean value, PLD2, for other distance in log distance formula. And uh, from there, we can calculate the mean receipt power for this, all these distances. Okay. So this is PLD2. Now we are going to calculate the outest probability. So what is the probability that the power falls below, uh, I mean, this minimum, this minimum, this the this p minimum. So it's the probability that we have our p are lower than that, or this p minimum. I mean, this is the mean value. This is like mu. This is the mu. Hello, around this mean value, we have a distribution of receipt power. The receipt power has a Gaussian distribution. Okay, it's not mean, minimum power, but seed power has a Gaussian distribution around the, whatever value we are calculating is just a mean. Around that we can we could have any other values. So this is the mean. I mean we set it here as uh, our mu or mean value. This peer and peer mean. Then we get the probability. Okay, but we wanna get the probability that the power is better than this. Uh, and it is falling below this level. So one minus Q, one minus Q we're setting. Now, uh, Q is related to error function this way. So one minus Q will be one minus half plus half error function, X by root two. So one minus half, you get half, half plus half. So with error function, you have to wanna calculate uh, the probability would be half plus half into error function, and it has to be divided by root two. So in percentage, we get this probability. So then we plot, we get this. So at different distances, uh, our cell radius, we have this kind of <laughs> problem. As I said, that you can estimate the cell radius from here, or you have certain cell radius in mind. So you check <clears throat> changing the changing pt here, changing pt here, you, you come up with a satisfactory outest probability for your uh, design cell radius. Okay. Okay, so in the exam, you have to calculate outest probability using J table. Uh, now, any questions? If not, finally, we touch upon indoor propagation models. The models we have discussed so far apply to only outdoor cases, outside buildings. But inside buildings, things work a little differently. You have many different walls <coughs> and floors. Uh, so the movable objects are categorized as soft partitions. They, their height is uh, lower than the ceiling. Like say, uh, if you have cubicles or some plywood particle boards uh, going, uh, okay, they they are all soft partition. They're movable, and they don't go up to the ceiling. But the brick walls and the concrete facade, they all are hard partitions. So they're treated differently, and there are different pathless models. The pathless model names we are sharing here just as examples. New models are even coming up recently. Uh, quite a few 
popular malls and playlists by IT. So when you graduate and you join workforce, then maybe some new malls. But uh, these are just examples for you to be familiar with that you have certain equations that sit some parameter values you enter and then you get the estimated value. That's what I mean by the Pathos model. And uh, so certain parameter values which would take on different values for different kinds of environment for, for indoor cases for different types of buildings uh, have and mm -hmm. always in that was you have some it heavily depends on the frequency we know the impact of frequency and there is definitely some term for d because you want to get the parallels for different distances okay so these two terms must be there other Terms that the models. But they are to find out the enter and you get back. I to say that estimation can only be used with log distance model, or this that was the only way to have a outest probability calculation. Other types of models can also be used for <coughs> outest probability estimation in probabilistic way. But uh, this was just an example for us. This this problem. Was just an example. Finally, this is the final slide where we mentioned that the I mean this I mean this the, the, these few slides are the concluding ones. They mentioned that whatever uh, models we shared I apply to some frequencies maybe up to a few gigahertz only. Because that was the most used cases, uh, but in future people are going to use very high frequencies. Already in some areas, it has started. So the there, I mean, recently in recent years, people have also developed path loss models for high frequency use up to 100 gigahertz, and these are the three common, uh, three popular such models, which can be used up to um, 100 gigahertz. I saw somewhere the use of alpha, beta, gamma model, ABG. Okay, this is probably more popular, but there are also CI and CIF models, closing <coughs> space reference and closing. Uh, okay, anyway, I mean, this one is with frequency dependent. <coughs> That's why the term F comes in. Anyway, so there are separate, completely separate models for high frequency use. I'm not even sharing the equations for these models because it just to let you know that there are different models available. The frequency is definitely an important issue. And for high Okay, so let's stop here. Now, section B, folks, I'm sorry, but please join us. Okay, we would have our next few lectures are going to be short. Uh, short uh, a few very short lectures uh, so far we spoke of the permission taking permission from the government to use certain frequency ranges for wireless communication <clears throat> but think about the cases like uh, say you have a, a Wi-Fi router at home or the kids are using some uh, wireless walkie-talkie toy phones or so some remote control devices. So for this kind of household uses, <coughs> toys or say cordless phone routers, uh, the Bluetooth connected uh, headsets, uh, you are transmitting some signal yourself and then 
also you are using it but it is not possible that you get a permission uh, from the government for for this kind of uh, i mean small use purposes you say that i wouldn't use that uh, right right um, because taking permission can be a tedious process uh, um, also it involves paying some money so you may not agree to pay money for license or taking all the hassle so this is why some spectrum is left <laughs> um, in all countries uh, for unlicensed uses anyone can use them with without re any requirement of license you don't need to take any permission you can use that provided that you satisfy you fulfill certain requirements from the government the government sets some requirements this requirements vary among countries uh, and uh, uh, basically there are two kinds of requirements see uh, it says that the there are certain radio bands is defined by ITU which don't require license for operation if used with certain transmit power and duty cycle well <clears throat> and uh, the radio bands it mentions are called industrial scientific and medical radio bands ISM and the other one is UNII so these each of them is a list of frequency ranges ISM I'm sure I'll shortly share the list of frequency ranges under ism uh, so on these ranges can be used but uh, you have to maintain the transmit power within certain limit meaning that you have certain range of operation and this power level is is pretty low so your operation will be very localized you don't cover a wide range and so within this small range there can be other users but not too many because you have a short range other people may also be using the same frequency but again with the small ranges so that can be uh, i mean there can be many different uh, hotspot like operations you know, each with small range well uh the other point is duty cycle what is that duty cycle means that uh, say if i well it would be better if i i could when the next day i may i may draw it but for now if you think <coughs> of uh, a say like if you have one and zero bit when it, when it draws a one and zero then this one has a high voltage and zero has a low so like you have a high value and then you have a low value so uh, duty cycle means that you have some on period and then some off period so over <laughs> a, within certain period you have um, on and off periods the ratio can be anything but the i mean this ratio on period compared to the whole period is called the duty cycle it is uses in in many different uh, types of <laughs> mechanism okay so in mechanical engineering uh, and in many of mesh electric machinery there are duty cycle <laughs> concept now in this case what it says that you can use this unlicensed uh, well maybe i share the list of them so it it i mean the point gets clear so this is the list of ism bands you see that i'm showing a range of frequencies uh sorry the first two columns should have been given the same color so okay the first column gives you the initial frequency and the second column gives you the end frequency so you have different frequency ranges in different rows you have different frequency ranges so these frequency ranges 
can be used without any permission from the government okay. so there there's so many and uh, the bandwidth is for each of these ranges is shown on the third column so certain band bandwidth and you see the bandwidth is not large so a small bandwidth is available for this kind of unlicensed uses the center of the whole frequency range is shown at the last column similarly there are certain frequency ranges under u and ia bands ism bands are more pop more popular there are many different bands here i and i u and i bands are given and the maximum power limits are also shown here in this table <coughs> So certain frequency ra ranges are uh, called, called unlicensed bands. Okay. But you need to maintain transmit power requirements and due to cycle requirements. Like over this much period, okay, you can use only this much uh, for transmission. The rest of the time, your device has to be idle. You cannot transmit anything. Okay, so there are certain requirements for duty cycle too. <clears throat> I'll I'll give you an example of the duty cycle later. Well, the original purpose was not commercial of communication. As as I said that uh, I mean as the name says, <laughs> industrial, scientific, uh, medical. There can be different medical equipment at your home. Uh, with uh, with requiring wireless uh, communication. So, or you have some scientific research. Um, so you you can use so short range low power wireless communication. But uh, nowadays, later in the presentation, we'll show you that some commercial communication also is, uh, has started using these bands, which are which are only originally uh, defined for <laughs> non-commercial use. The advantage of this unlicensed operation is that, of course, you don't have to pay for any fees license. And secondly, you, you don't have the hassle of, uh, of the permission from the government, which is basically a contract with the government. Okay. So no contracts are needed. You can just start using it. <clears throat> but there, there are several problems okay. if you purchase a license then you don't run into this this problems like it is available for unlicensed band for everyone you cannot stop other people uh, using these bands so when you are using certain frequency range there can be other people nearby who are also using you have nothing to say so <laughs> That would cause interference. So your device has to use some mechanism to exist in this kind of interference uh, included, interference inclusive situation. Okay, I'll, t I'll tell you how, how it is done. Say the Wi-Fi router we have. Uh, okay, um, maybe, maybe I, I tell you now. Well, <clears throat> The devices scan the whole, um, well, out of the, out of the whole list, this 2.4 gigahertz range is most popular. Okay, it's most popular. Uh, <clears throat> later, I have a list. Let's see. <clears throat> the Wi-Fi routers were all using 2.4 gigahertz, but the recent routers are also using 5 gigahertz band. So mostly 2. In the Bluetooth uses 2.4 gigahertz band. Um, cordless phones use different bands. Many of them use 900 megahertz because at low frequency it, uh, it can have wider coverage. But let's assume that a cordless phone is made with the, the use of 900 megahertz band. 900 megahertz band means uh, 
this particular band which ranges from 902 <coughs> to 928. So the plus is for use uh, frequency. But does sound corresponds have say, 40 channels? So it this it accommodates 40 different channels within this available unlicensed band, and uh, it can communicate using any of this channel it just needs one channel one out of this 40. so what it does when you want to use it it scans the the whole frequency range and checks which channel is currently free it has i mean it does it has no power in the air so once it finds <laughs> this and maybe say channel number say 16 is free within this range certain frequency range or channel is free so it starts using that channel so it keeps checking uh which part is free every time you want to use it it will check and use it now probably you understand how the unlicensed operation of multiple devices coexist you can definitely have other nearby users who are also at 2.4 gigahertz you have a 2.4 gigahertz router or some device, somebody else also. But you were not transmitting always. You have certain duty cycle. And first of all, you have a you have some power limit. So you your area is <coughs> is small. Within that, there are not too many other users using the same frequency. Everybody has a small range. So within your area. There are not too many other people. But whoever is there it can coexist because everybody has some duty cycle. You meet for some time and then you don't do anything. Okay. Also, you use different frequencies. Like in Wi-Fi, there are several frequency uh, frequency uh, within 2.4 gigahertz. There are, as I remember, 11 different bands, but there is some overlapping among these bands. So if you take, our, I mean, bands without any overlapping, there are three within this um, 2.4 gigahertz. It, I mean, the whole range is 83.5 megahertz. So there are three bands. <laughs> Possible for my version with no overlapping, but with overlapping there, with some overlapping, there are different bands. Okay. So it can still operate so with some overlapped transmission. It can work. So there are different technologies to read up actual data and other difference. Bottom line is that you need to have a mechanism. Okay, recently these high frequencies have been added, <laughs> like this 2.24 gigahertz, 61 gigahertz, these all are high frequency analysis bands. They have been added recently. Okay. Uh, and they're pretty good bandwidth available in this high frequency. Uh, in general, you can say that, uh, I mean, for islands, for licensed operation, it's up to you how much you purchase from the government. Well, of course, the government also has to lease. Okay, out of the out of the available, I mean, uh, out of the uh, offered bandwidth, you can purchase a bigger chunk if you can pay higher. And uh, <clears throat> now the next few points are, are noteworthy. You see that when you work with unlicensed operation so you want to market a product uh, for unlicensed there are variation among the countries 
with the specifications. The, all these frequency ranges are not <coughs> unlicensed in every country. So this is this sort of the this not I think uh, these are all the major unlicensed frequency ranges. Different countries permit different uh, ranges from the there's no uh, definite one in the countries. Uh, so if you want a market product for unlicensed frequencies, so you need to have some variation in your product for marketing in different parts of the world. For example, uh, the it's 800 bands like 865 to 868. This band is available in Europe, but it's not available in USA for unlicensed operation. Rather, a similar band is like 902 through <clears throat> 928 megahertz. So your product has to have differences uh, for, for operation in different parts of the world. Also, the power limit and duty cycle, they vary among countries. Uh, Europe has a lower power limit than USA. Also, the duty cycle is different, as I later stated. Uh, it's different between Europe and USA. And uh, the interference condition can also be different. It depends, you know. I mean, it depends on how many users really have in the area you are using your product. Um, but normally, in Europe, See this 868 band is uh, pretty interference free. They're not you won't find too many users around yourself. But whereas in USA the similar bands, you don't have the 868 bands unlicensed, but similar whatever similar bands you have for unlicensed operation is noiser. So there are there are a pretty good number of users. Maybe kids are uh, have some wirelessly connected twice or something. Uh, in the next home. So you'll find some interference from the neighborhood. So it's a, a, a small difficult. And the quality of product may be better for mm -hmm. licensed operation because large industries mm -hmm. are involved there. A lot of money flow you have for licensed operation. <clears throat> so the technology and research, everything should be better there. Okay. And these are the common applications. So some other additional common applications like door openers, wireless doorbells, and the RFID, the you know, the contact uh, less smart cards. See if you want to swipe your <laughs> um, debit or credit card. Uh, nowadays, you just bring it close to the device. You don't have to swipe through the device. <coughs> so, with wireless connection, uh, it is recognized and approved. Finally, as I hinted in the beginning, that uh, some commercial use is started. Although, well, Wi Fi can also be regard as, I mean, somewhat, sometimes can be related to commercial use. But the mobile communication is definitely a well-recognized commercial use. Uh, this commercial, commercial uh, people just thought that the frequency ranges, which don't require any license, <clears throat> are providing internet through the whole world. And we guys are also providing internet connection, and all of their communication is <laughs> actually gradually they are moving to internet, moving to the use of internet network. So similar service we are also providing, but we have to pay for the frequency spectrum. But many people also in the similar business are not paying for the frequency spectrum because those bands don't require any license. So why don't we also use the spectrum? This is already free. So 
So we use some licensed spectrum, but in addition to that, why don't you use the unlicensed spectrum? Then on that part, we don't have to pay anything. The overall cost will be less. Based on this concept, um, from LTU and from 4G onwards, uh, some specifications or uh, <coughs> protocols have been added to um, support operation on those unlicensed frequencies. In the case of LT, these uh, pro protocols are called LTU, LT unlicensed. And for 5G, for 5G, the equivalent term is new radio. Okay, for 4G, it's LT for 5, 5G, the counterpart is new radio, NR. <coughs> so it is called NRU, NR unlicensed. So basically, the same kind of, I mean, same in kind of uh, in implementation or protocols you have, but for a later 3 people release. Typically, from Relic 16. They start to use the term NRU. NR, NRU. This term has been uh, related from release sixteen. From release sixteen. Anyway, uh, LT uh, has uh, has something called a licensed assisted access LA. Okay, it was first introduced in release thirteen. So unlicensed operation has been added to LT, where is 13, and it has certain contention protocol. As you see, that there will be other people around using the same frequencies. You cannot stop. Uh, so some contention protocol, how to contain other, uh, other users. Okay. Uh, so this protocol has been added, and that is called LBT. Listen before talk. It is like, again, the what I mentioned for the cordless phone is check which part is free, okay? That is like listening, and then you transmit. That's like talking. Anyway, uh, so we're not going into the protocols for this online operation. In release fourteen, it was um, it was enhanced, and that is called enhanced license operation ELA. In release 515 is called further <laughs> enhanced F E L A. The the protocol you have uh, inherently and under N T or N N R U now. Any questions? If not, we'll move to our next short discussion. <clears throat> Sir, we are not listening. Are you saying something? Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, no, this is a short discussion, mm -hmm. which uh, tells that uh, discusses some thing called modes of wave propagation, how the radio wave propagates, and uh, we have three classes. But I'll quickly go through this whole discussion because this classification is already um, sort of unimportant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but uh, until. 1980s, this was an important classification. After the inception of um, 
internet. Okay, this classification is no longer that important. Anyway, the type of communication so far we discussed between two points, you have radio signal and uh, this uh, I mean, propagation uh, enabling the communication. So this is the category of space wave propagation. Now, the first type is ground wave propagation, which is uh, say, uh, commonly used for radio broadcast. <coughs> it uh, just glides, glides along the surface of the ground using diffractions you have. It keeps diffracting and there is no severe loss of power. So we can have a very wide coverage. You know, uh, during 1971 war, uh, there was an furtively people were transmitting something Bangla better. So almost the whole country was covered, how wide the coverage could be. <clears throat> and uh, the opponent couldn't identify it where it was transmitted from. So this this type of uh, ground, I mean, radio propagation along the surface of the ground, okay, main basically relying on diffraction along the survey, along the curvature of the earth is uh, categorized as counter propagation. And it, uh, for this, I mean, common uses, uh, I mean, it should be the Frequency should be below three megahertz for ground wave propagation, and the radio AM radio uses some frequencies below that. Okay, now a third type called sky wave propagation relies on a reflection from the atmosphere, and the reflection takes place in the ionosphere level. Well, uh. The, the lower part of the atmosphere is troposphere, then is stratosphere, and uh, above that, there is ionosphere, which is D, E, and F layers. Because of the ray from the sun, uh, the particles get ionized, <clears throat> molecules get ionized, and uh, you have positive and negative ions there. So within this ionized layer, there is refraction of the radio wave. When you transmit something, uh, it goes to the sky, and then within the ionization sphere, or ionization layer, uh, you get some ref uh, refraction, and that can lead to complete internal reflection, taking the signal back to the Earth. So that's how you can get the signal uh, at a very long distance, maybe communicating to another continent. So this is how very, see with ground wave, you can have pretty wide covers. Maybe you cover a small country, but you cannot go beyond that. But using the sky wave, you can, uh, using sky wave, you cannot go to a short distance. You, because it comes from a reflection from the sky, a uh, very long distance can only be covered. So what, what can happen, you're transmitting for this kind of trans, uh, communication radio broadcast. Uh, you can have gr gr good ground wave coverage and then you have some area not covered by sky or ground wave. Then you can have coverage from the sky wave. So this part left between these two coverage areas are called, is called skip zone. Now, because of the sky wave, uh, long distance uh, communication was possible. I, nowadays it's, but the frequencies cannot be too high. It should be below 30 megahertz. Three to 30 megahertz is the ideal range for this, uh, this kind of internal reflection. So for the sky wave to work. And this is, this is why the early radio broadcast had some thing called short wave and medium wave. Medium wave was was these ranges. 
and shortwave was uh, the ranges here in the high frequency range. And uh, we, uh, I do remember in 1980s, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, even worse political situation, but we could not uh, hear any correct news from the local radio stations. We had to rely on <clears throat> Voice of America, and there was no internet then. Uh, so mostly, uh, the I mean, with the Bangladesh people had to rely on Voice of America and BBC, transmitted from America or UK. Because of Skywave, we could listen to those radio stations. And uh, I also do remember that at night, the I mean, of course, the sun was not very clear, but uh, we could still we we had to struggle to listen to the correct news. There's no other source for correct information, and uh, uh, the I mean, I do also remember that at night the audibility was better. It's because you see the I mean, at night. There is no sun ray, and the D layer disappears then. E, F layer is still ionized, but D and F. So because of the absence of D layer, you don't have absorption of the energy okay, in the, in the, in the D layer. Rather, you can still have the internal reflection in E or F layers, but uh, D layer doesn't absorb. And so the audibility was a little better at night. Okay. Uh, so, but now you understand that in these days of internet, this is <laughs> skywave has almost no uses. The whole, I mean, this whole classification is not highlighted any longer. Okay. So that's why I wanna stop this discussion at this point. Any questions? Okay, the next discussion I just start today and um, uh, I'm not, okay, maybe, maybe we stop here then. I start, um, started another topic with section A. Uh, so maybe I request the section O folks, section A folks to join on the, next day uh, after five minutes or five minutes or five to ten minutes okay so i can finish on the early slides with you guys sections b and c and then we can be synchronized all the sections can be synchronized okay now i'd like to take the attendance I don't know, section b and then section attendance, attendance, also complete taking attendance from section b Section B folks can leave. Okay, please uh, turn on your uh, microphone so you can respond to me. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> please respond to me. Two, one. Three, sir. Three, three. Four. Present, sir. Five. Present, sir. Six. Six. Present, sir. Seven. Present, sir. Nine. Present, sir. Ten. Ten. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. <laughs> okay. What's your idea? Eleven or ten? Sir, eleven present, teacher, sir. Or maybe my okay. camera. Okay, 13. Present, sir. 15. Present, sir. 16. Present, sir. 17. Present, sir. 18. 18. 19. Present, sir. 20. Present, sir. 21. 22. Present, sir. 24. Present, sir. 25. Yes, sir. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Yes, sir. Twenty-nine. 
प्रेसेंट सर थर्टी 